John Cochran is like a lightning rod for those of the Keynesian persuasion from Chicago, where the holding the history of Knight, Stiegler, Friedman, and Lucas. Professor Cochran, great to have you um, here. Um, how bad have the Keynesians screwed up 2011's economics? <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, it was wrong. So the basic idea that I take money from you, I give it to Joe, and somehow that makes us all better off is just wrong. So uh, too bad. Didn't work. Let's bring up the note of the day here from John Cochran. Of course, lots going back and forth. This from a year or so ago. How did Paul Krugman get it so wrong? Regulators are just as human and irrational as market participants. If bankers are, in Krugman's words, idiots, then so must be the typical Geithner, Bernanke, and regulatory staff. That from John Cochran. I thought Chicago was a school of rational expectations. How do you overlay our irrationality on the work of Lucas and Friedman? Let, let, let me clarify that because I, I think Bernanke is actually a really sharp guy, uh, and, and that so that was an if-then sort of thing. There's a lot of people who say we're behavioral, we're psychological people, are idiots, and um, sometimes people do do strange things. But then they they go from there to say, well, the government has to run everything for us. Well, if you think people are idiots, then logically it doesn't follow that the government is going to be any smarter than the people who are idiots out there, uh, and that that was the point of that quote. How do you boost our animal spirits? How do you look at the confidence that we see in the Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index or we see calls of recession? What is the economic prescription under the politician's short-term pressure to get it done, to get it going in this fourth quarter? Well, I, I don't think you, the objective is not to boost animal spirits. The point of the federal government is not to be the psychologist in chief to make us feel better. The way you boost confidence is by setting forth policies that people see are actually going to work. Uh, people are not stupid. I like that, psychologist in chief. Here, let's bring up the good professor from Princeton, Paul Krugman in the New York Times, of course. This is today, phony fear factor. Political parties have often coalesced around dubious Cochrane-like economic ideas, but I can't think of a time when a party's economic doctrine has been so completely divorced from reality. I made a joke there, professor, about your name. That's not in the op-ed. How is Republican political dialogue now different from Cochrane economics? Oh, gosh. I mean, I, I don't want to get partisan on one party for another. Uh, Cochrane economics isn't Cochrane economics. It's Adam Smith economics. You want an economy to grow, uh, get out of the way, let free markets go, and let it grow. Uh, that's not particularly a deeper novel insight. We just have to sit down and let it happen. Do you have any confidence that Republican candidates or the president can get out of the way? Uh, I think there are good Republican candidates and good Democratic candidates. Uh, you know, it's not... The idea that free markets work isn't uh, only for one party. Uh, I wish they would, either of them would do it. John, let's look at national savings, folks. This is a chart. We get a lot of good emails on this. Thank you for those. This is our savings, corporate savings, and our national debt. And you can see we have collapsed from the time of Milton Friedman from 8% as a portion of our economy down to a savings that was negative and borders on zero right now. Professor Cochran, is it important that we boost national savings? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, we've been saying for years savings are good. People are actually trying to save right now, and the government's trying to undo that as much as humanly possible by borrowing. Uh, we had Mr. Buffett on today. Would you suggest a Buffett tax as a solution that we go after this popular idea, as a Bloomberg poll shows, that we go after so-called millionaires? Well, the Buffett tax is an anecdote, and there isn't even a proposal out there. Oh, yeah, let's just generically tax the rich. What I think is really sad about the whole Buffett tax business is Washington seems to be talking about tax policy by these stories. That one turns out to be false story. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, rich people do pay a lot more taxes, and their marginal tax rates are through the roof. 
Uh, instead, why don't we take even the President's Commission, the Bull Simpson Commission, anytime you sit down and look at the numbers and say, what do you do? You come up with a very simple, nonpartisan, bipartisan uh, answer lower the rates, get rid of the deductions, throw out the obscenity of the tax code, not some soundbite about, oh, let's tax the rich. It's, it's really sad that we're just talking about, you know, one op-ed by Warren Buffett is going to drive our tax right. policy. I, I, I like the idea that it's sad that one little thing takes the focus versus all these other serious issues. John Cochran, should we bring back Bowles Simpson? Do you support that? Is relatively good economics? Oh boy, you know, and any big thing like that has all sorts of stuff in it. So I'll pass on that, and uh, and let's right. let's do something clearer and simpler that I can handle. I, yeah, I want to take the other side of the argument here. If Paul Krugman was sitting at me, he would look at the modern Chicago school and say, "Well, it's really, really great, but there's times where." the government needs to stabilize exogenous shocks to the system, that you can't just let markets solve everything. Rebut that statement, please. <laughs> uh, well, look what a wonderful job it's doing. Uh, you know, in theory, it would be great. The, the great uh, daddy, nanny government that comes out and guides us and, and can accurately diagnose all the problems and set things right. Uh, if that were possible, it would be wonderful. The, the issue isn't on, on whether it would be nice. The question is whether it's possible. And you just look at their hapless efforts and, and you can tell this is, this is just something that's not going to work. I mean, nothing that they're proposing now for the next year is going to plausibly make a dent in unemployment. So, you know, what are we talking about here, Paul? Oh, I like that. Very good, John. I wish Paul Krugman, we could get the both of you on. That would be fascinating. Here we go. Let's bring up this op-ed quickly right now. John Conkren, this is a wonderful article. Whether you agree or disagree with the professor from Chicago, a lengthy article in National Affairs, Inflation and Debt. The induced inflation view is in many ways reminiscent of wage price spiral of the 40s. If we just talk about lower inflation, lower inflation will happen. Professor Conkren, Olivier Blanchard, Chard, in my conversation with him last week, backtracked from induced inflation. He says we don't need it now. How do you respond to people that want to goose nominal GDP to get animal spirits going by giving us just a little bit of inflation? Um, well, a little bit of inflation is sort of like a little bit of sin. It sounds good early on. You know, let's just take uh, one more toke or something of the sort. Um, but, you know, then you pay for it later on. A little bit of inflation is like a little bit of default on the, not, on the government debt. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Other people do think it's a good idea. The bigger question here, though, is whether we're going to avoid uh, some big debt crisis. And I think that's, that's the thing to point to. We are piling up this huge amount of debt. Our government is, is rolling it over and, and hoping we don't have a Greek-style debt crisis. Um, we, not be, we may not be arguing about can the Fed want a little inflation or a little less inflation. We may be faced with a Greece's situation, and that's a much more present danger, I'd say. Too much information. Let's bring it up. One final chart with Professor Cochran before we talk Wall Street. A less nominal animal spirit. That green line is 4% of GDP, and we just can't get there. Professor Cochran, what's an appropriate level of real or nominal GDP? As much as the private sector can produce. I mean, more, more is better. Now, we're, in, we're deep in the tank. We've lost about 10% of GDP in the recession, and we don't seem to be climbing our way back again. Uh, I, I don't agree with this idea that, that some bureaucrat in Washington can decide, oh, 4% is the right amount. Any more is too much. Any less is too little. You know, the Russian central planners try that. Um, is, let, let, let's go for as much as we can produce. Right. Let's leave it there. John Cochran, thank you so much. Boo School, Chicago.